Hi, my name is Dr. English, and today we're going to continue our conversation about trends of the periodic table. Specifically in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at ionization and the trends of ionization across the period and down a group. Then we're going to look at electronegativity, also electronegativity across the period and down a group, and then finally metallic character across the period and then down a group. So let's start with ionization energy. Ionization energy is going to measure how much energy is required to remove an electron from the outer valence principal energy level. In other words, how much energy does it require to remove one of the valence electrons from the outermost shell? If the electron is loosely held, the ionization energy is going to be low. If the electron is strongly held, the ionization energy is high. Here are some examples of what I mean. If we look at the element lithium, which we know is found in group 1, lithium has an ionization energy of 520 kilojoules per 1 mole. Let's just say for the sake of this tutorial that that's a relatively low amount of energy. Compare that amount of 520 to the element fluorine, which we know is in group 17 and is a nonmetal. Fluorine has an ionization energy of 1,681 kilojoules per mole almost three times as much energy as our metal lithium that we see over here. The general trend that we're going to see is that metals in general will have low ionization energies while nonmetals like fluorine will have higher ionization energies. Now let's look at ionization energy across the period. Ionization energy is generally going to increase across the period. The explanation for this is that the nuclear charge where the number of protons inside the nucleus will increase across a period, which again makes sense because as you go from sodium to magnesium to aluminum and so on and so forth, we're adding a proton inside the nucleus of each of these elements. So progressively more energy is required to take away an electron because of the positive negative attraction between the nucleus and the electrons in that outermost shell. So the more nuclear charge that's inside the nucleus, the harder it is to remove an electron in the outermost shell. So we can see based on the data here that we see for period 3 that as we go from sodium to argon, the ionization energy values are going to increase dramatically. So as we look at this chart right here, we'll see that it is increasing in general as we go across the period. Now let's look at ionization energy down a group. The general trend is that ionization energy will decrease moving down a group. Here's the explanation. Electrons are farther from the nucleus, so the positive negative attraction is weaker and less energy is required to remove the electron. So as we add a shell to each element, as we move down a group on the periodic table, those valence electrons get farther and farther away from the nucleus and those core electrons are basically protecting that valence electron from the nucleus. So it becomes easier and easier to remove an electron from the outermost shell because it is so far away from the nucleus and the core electrons are protecting it. So if we look at group 16 in particular, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, and polonium, we'll see that as we go down the group, as we add more shells to the element, the valence electrons are going to get farther and farther away, and this is the amount of energy that's needed to remove them. So oxygen, where its valence electrons are in the second shell, compared to polonium, where the valence electron is farther away, there's a big difference between the two. Oxygen is going to have a much higher one, polonium is going to have a much smaller one. So again, the general trend that we see over in this chart right here is that as you go down the group, the ionization energy will also decrease. Now let's talk about electronegativity. Electronegativity is different from ionization energy. Ionization energy is a specific amount of energy needed to remove an electron. Electronegativity measures an atom's ability to attract electrons to itself. And the electronegativity scale ranges from 0 to 4. Fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table, with having a value of 4, while elements like cesium and francium are the least electronegative with a value of 0.8 and 0.7. So francium and cesium 
are located down here. So these would be our least electronegative elements down in this corner or our most active metals, while up here would be our most electronegative elements, primarily because up in this corner, they have a lot of valence electrons in that outermost shell. The nucleus is very close to those valence electrons. The nucleus is going to hold on very tightly to the electrons that are there and be willing to add more until the shell reaches eight compared to elements that are located at the bottoms of group one and two where the valence electrons are much farther away and the metals in general will want to give up an electron to look like the electron configuration of the closest noble gas. Let's look at the trend of electronegativity across the period. So the general trend states that electronegativity is going to increase across the period, very much like ionization energy. The explanation is that the nuclear charge, the number of protons in the nucleus, is going to increase across the period. Thus, the increased positive charge in the nucleus pulls more on the negative electrons. So the more positive your nucleus is, and the closer your valence electrons are to the nucleus, the more that nucleus can attract other electrons to fill that outermost shell. Let's look at the data that's given to us here for period three. So again, we have sodium through chlorine. Sodium has an electronegativity of 0.93, and as we go across the period, we see that it increases until we get up to chlorine, which is 3.16. So we can see from our chart here that the electronegativity is definitely going to increase as we go across the period. Now let's look at electronegativity down a group. The general trend is that electronegativity will decrease moving down a group. The explanation for this is that elements located successively further down a group have a decreased ability to attract electrons. So let's look at the data that's given to us here, going from oxygen to polonium. The electronegativity is pretty high for oxygen, 3.44, but as we go down the group, polonium has an electronegativity of 2. So again, we look at our chart right here, and the general trend, if we look at this, is that electronegativity is going to decrease as we move down the group. Now let's talk about the concept of metallic character. Metallic character is going to describe the relative extent to which a given element exhibits the physical properties of metals. So if we look at something like potassium here or calcium here, we would say that they have luster, they are malleable, they are ductile, they conduct electricity, definitely pound them in the thin sheets, we could draw them out into wires. Potassium is so soft as a metal that we could actually cut it with a knife. Compare that to selenium, which is a non-metal, if we hit it with a hammer, it would shatter, it's brittle. It does not have luster, ergo lackluster. It cannot conduct electricity. It's not malleable, it's not ductile. Bromine's a non-metal. It's a gas at room temperature. It's not malleable, not ductile, most definitely not because it's a gas. Uh, won't conduct heat, won't conduct electricity. So when we talk about metallic character, these two would have low metallic character while potassium and calcium would have high metallic character because they demonstrate the properties of metals. Now let's talk about metallic character across a period. So the general trend is metallic character will decrease across a period. It's sort of self-evident when you look at the elements in a period and you start saying to yourself, well that's a metal, that's a metal, that's a metalloid, that's a non-metal. But we want to look at this specifically. As you move right on the table, you get closer to the non-metallic elements. So our most metallic, most metallic elements will be the ones over on the left-hand side of the table. I'm not saying that scandium, titanium, vanadium, and all these elements like cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, that those aren't metals, but when we talk about what is the most metallic, we usually talk about the group one and group two metals. These all still show properties of metals, but once we get over to our metalloids like germanium and arsenic, they are going to start transitioning and showing properties of both metals and nonmetals. And then we get into our nonmetals, selenium and bromine right here, which as I talked about in the previous slide, 
They don't have luster. They're not malleable. They're not ductile. They're not going to conduct electricity. Definitely not. In terms of phases, selenium is a, is a solid at room temperature, but is very brittle if we were to strike it with a hammer. And bromine is a liquid, so definitely not metallic. And then we get into krypton, which is a noble gas, and definitely not showing metallic properties. So the general trend is, as you go across the period, the elements are going to display less and less metallic characteristics. Now let's talk about metallic character down a group. And if you're going to see a question about this, typically the questions on the Regents exam will go along with groups 15 and 16. Because it's in those groups that you're going to see the greatest difference as you go down a group between nonmetals, metalloids, metals at the bottoms. And that's what we're going to see in this example right here. So the general trend is metallic character is going to increase down a group. The explanation for this is that as you move down a group on the table, elements exhibit more metallic properties such as low electronegativity and ionization energy values. Here is group 15, classic example. We have two nonmetals at the top, nitrogen and phosphorus. Then we get into two metalloids, arsenic and antimony. And finally, your metals at the bottom, bismuth and unnamed up to this point, UUP. Nonmetals, metalloids, metals. So the general trend is metallic character will increase as you go down a group. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We actually covered quite a bit. We went over the definition of ionization energy, and we talked about the trends of ionization energies across a period and down a group. Then we talked about the general definition of electronegativity, which is very, very important. And again, the trend across the period and down a group. And then finally, we talked about metallic character. And then we looked at the trends for metallic character across the period and down a group. Need more help? Please feel free to contact me. Have a great day.